Okay, so now that we've introduced kind of what your memory on your computer looks like, that there's caching and RAM and disk, we talked about how those affect the runtimes of your program based off the locality and how caching is designed. We're finally going to introduce a data structure that's designed to be friendly to some of these concepts and work in a very particular context. So let me explain the problem we're going to try to solve with this thing called a B plus tree, and then I'll explain how this data structure works. So one kind of common application that, uh, is, that we use data structures in is the management of large data systems. So usually people talk call these things databases. You've probably used a database in your life before. Um, if you've ever gone to IMDB, the Internet Movie Database, to look up information about a movie or an actor or actress, you've used a database. A database is just a collection of data that you can somehow search or potentially modify um, in some way. Now, IMDB is huge. It stores lots of information about all of the actors and actresses that are in the database. It's probably not the case that you can store all of that information in RAM. Like you only have eight or 16 gigabytes of RAM and there are probably hundreds if, of gigabytes, if not terabytes of data about all those actors and actresses. So you're probably gonna need to, need to store all that data on disk so that you can access it whenever you want. Um, it's too big to fit in memory. Um, so you'd have to go get, do a disk read anytime you want to access something in particular. Additionally, a very common thing in these type of database applications is to make it easy to look up a particular entry. And so usually there's this concept of having like an ID. So you might have an actor ID that gives you a unique identifier for any actor or actress. And you might make a map, maybe a tree map from ID to all that information about that actor or actress. So you can imagine maybe making an AVL tree where the keys are these IDs and the values is all the information about that actor or actress. Um, and that can help you efficiently look up any particular actor or actress. Now, usually if you're talking about these data systems that have lots and lots of entries, these trees are also gonna be pretty big. Maybe even so big that the tree itself doesn't fit in memory, maybe doesn't fit in RAM. And so you might also have to store your tree on your hard drive or your solid state drive. Now, this isn't completely unreasonable. Consider a tree that's only 40 nodes tall. I wouldn't call 40 like a really big number, right? And I can count to 40 pretty easily or maybe with a little struggles. Um, but if you have a height of tree four, uh, of 40 and it's a full tree, that's gonna end up being 1.1 times 10 to the 12 nodes. That is a huge amount of storage required just to store the tree itself, not even counting the data that you need to store for the actual actors and actresses. So it's very possible, even for moderate sized trees, that they're not gonna fit in memory at all. So now, this is where things get extra, extra bad. Because tree structures, like link structures, aren't stored contiguously. They're gonna be stored on disk. Each node is gonna have some kind of memory location on disk. And remember, disk is different than RAM. It's this place that's much, much slower. And so if you access the first node, okay, so you're gonna grab the node from disk and maybe you might get lucky and the nearby nodes might be in the same page. Just, just like when you access RAM, it's gonna pull a whole block. Whenever you ask, access disk, it's gonna pull a whole page in. And you might get lucky and nearby nodes might be on that page, but most likely you won't. They might be stored somewhere else. And that means you're gonna to have to go to disk every single time you want to access one of these nodes because you're gonna be missing the page every single time. And this is gonna cause a huge slowdown in your program because when we talked about those latency numbers, that disk seek took forever in comparison to what your CPU is doing. So your program will be so slow, slow this is basically like a linked list on the opposite of steroids because it is so much worse than what we had with the linked list scenario. Um, it is a truly, truly bad. So we want a data structure that is going to be optimized for reducing the number of times we go to disk. We're not necessarily trying to find the data structure that's maybe, maybe the easiest to understand or maybe has like the fastest best case or maybe the fastest milliseconds necessarily, um, our, the argument for this data structure is that the huge bottleneck of runtime is just simply these disk accesses. 
So what we're gonna do is design a data structure that tries to minimize the number of times you go to disk in a hope of making a more efficient structure. So this structure that we're gonna build up is called a B tree. Now, um, before I kind of highlight how this B tree works and all of this stuff, I wanna highlight one thing. These, this data structure is a really cool one and it's used a lot in large data applications. But we are not going to cover every single one of these details about B trees today. Um, we're, our goal is not that you're going to be able to implement one of these from scratch, but we want you to have some intuition for what the problem they're trying to solve is and how they go about trying to solve it. And so we want you to be able to kind of describe how these things are used and why they're used, but we're not going to ask how they're implemented. But in order to understand the how and the why, let's talk a little bit about some implementation details. So Here's the key idea. The thing that really slowed us down was that disk access. And be, just like with caching, when you access a disk, it's going to pull that whole page into memory, which is going to help us out, hopefully, if your data was contiguous, but doesn't help us if it's not. So in some sense, that entire page we brought up had a lot of wasted space in it because the nodes themselves were relatively small. The nodes in our binary search tree, our AVL tree, only stored a couple things in them. Right, the key, the value, the height of the tree in the AVL case, and a reference to your left and your right children. But that amount of data is only a couple bytes compared to the uh, large chunk of memory brought back in the whole page. So the first idea of trying to optimize this system is let make those nodes bigger, have them store more useful information to have less wasted space come back in that page read. Now, one thing I should mention before I describe how this is happening, this really only becomes a problem, this wasted space, because there's no guarantee of uh, the data being contiguous, right? If you had an array of data, you would know all of the things you're grabbing are right next to each other. But it's the fact that we have no guarantee that the other nodes are gonna be on that page, that all of that space is essentially wasted. So the first key idea for what the B plus tree does is, um, um, we are going to, um, instead of just having two children in a binary tree, we're going to extend this to having M children. Um, and so that means instead of just having two fields uh, for your left and right children, you might have an array of these references to point to all of your children. So we call this an M airy tree, not Mary. It's kind of a confusing name, but meaning that you have M children. You have at most M children. Now, this is probably not a complete picture because it's not really clear what do all those children represent. Like how are the children at the zeroth index different than the children at the fourth index, right? So this is not a complete picture. We need to still figure out how do we organize our children in a way that uh, helps us look up the data. So as a reminder, if you think back to our binary search tree, back to, oops, sorry, back to our AVL tree, how did we tell the difference between what's in our left child versus what's in our right child? It was all about the key. We said anything less than the key is in the left, anything greater than the key is to the right. So now that we have these M children, M, pl M places to store things, we, one idea is to just use multiple keys at these nodes. These keys will some, in some sense act like fence posts. So tell us all of the children to this side uh, have this property. So the idea here is in our M area tree, we'll store extra information. So we'll store something like um, a key four here, saying that the, ch the children that go in this subtree all are less than four. And then the children in this subtree, because they're between the key four and seven, they're gonna be all the things greater than four and less than seven. And so you kind of just treat it like a series of ranges rather than just less than greater than, you have kind of less than greater than all of these keys. So our second idea here is to store multiple keys here to divide the content into subtrees. So again, now instead of splitting in two chunks, we split into M chunks, and these keys act as our kind of fence post to figure out what goes next or what's gonna be down there. Now, the third idea, which this has been a bit weird so far, but hopefully you've been able to kind of understand, okay, I can understand why this will help us because we can now, instead of dividing by half, we can hopefully divide by M each time. It's kind of an extension of that binary search algorithm. 
we're going to do one other thing that is going to seem kind of weird at first. Now, we're going to, um, in our previous implementation of the AVL tree, inside each node, we stored the key and the value, right? Because if you want to look up three, you want to just return the value right there. We're going to do something weird here, and we're only going to store actual data in the leaf nodes. So all of the nodes inside the tree, the internal nodes, are just going to be these like key, these key um, uh, fence posts, essentially, that tell you, like, go down the tree this way if you're looking for this particular key. So the internal nodes are only going to have keys and what node comes next. Then the leaf nodes are going to store all of the data. So all of the keys that end up in this leaf node, we're going to store the key and the value there. And this structure, where the internal nodes, the nodes above the, at the top of the tree in the middle, are just these kind of key references and tell you where to go next. And the leaf nodes are all of these key value pairs, kind of all of the keys that ended up in this bucket of some sorts. Um, we call this a B plus tree. It is a disk friendly data structure. The internal nodes tell us where to go, how to get to all the, the data that's relevant. And then all of the real data, the key value pairs is gonna be stored in those leaf nodes. Now, importantly, the reason we do this is to store as much information as we can in each node. What we're gonna make sure is true in our B plus trees is that both the leaf nodes and the internal nodes fit exactly on a single page of memory that comes back from disk. So the idea here is by keeping the values outside of these internal nodes, we can potentially store more keys or more references to more children, increase that size M so that we can fit a lot of branches on a single page of memory. That's the key idea here of why we do this, is we're optimizing for um, making sure we can access disk as infrequently as possible. And the way to do this is to increase that M number. So then you can um, divide your data more and more for each node you access. And then your leaf nodes store all the data so you can actually access them. We're also gonna make those leaf nodes size of a single page so that when we just bring it back, you have all of the relevant nodes, uh, sorry, all of the relevant data in that node. And then you can quickly access uh, whichever key or value you're looking for. Um, so let's um, do a practice problem with this. Um, so let's try to think of, you know, looking at one of these B plus trees, what data am I actually going to look at for a particular key? So here I have on the top left, um, I have a little example of showing you how to read these internal nodes, just a kind of reminder. But take a second, with what I've shown you so far, how many nodes are we going to have to visit in order to call get of 23? Figure out what's the return, the, the value associated with the key 23. So take a second, um, how many nodes are we going to have to look up in order to get this key. Okay, so hopefully I had a chance to look at this. So in this context, it's gonna end up being three. What we do is we start at the top, and in order to get this node at the top, oh, whoops, my pen didn't go off. Go back, sorry about that. Oh, it's not going again. It decided, decided to revolt. Um, do I have to quit this? Sorry about that. Okay, I'll open this up again. A little drawing app is not very useful, I guess. Okay, so we start here. And in order to get this internal node, we have to actually go to disk and read it in. So it's going to bring back this whole page, which has all of these key value pairs. And it turns out most of them are empty because we only have two major split points from the top. That's okay. Um, but we read in that whole page. Then, because we're looking for the key 23, we know we're not going to go down to the less than 15 branch because 23 is greater than 15. We're going to go between 15 and 40. We're going to go down this branch because 23 is between 15 and 40. So now we figure out, okay, I know the address of this next internal node. So I need to read in this entire internal node. So that needs to go to disk and it's going to pull in that whole page. And we design these nodes to be the size of a page that fits the whole space. And then we need to figure out from here, okay, wait, here we go. Well, 23 is not less than 16, so I'm not gonna go here. 23 is not greater than or equal to 16 and less than 20, so it does not go here. 
we're going to end up going down this branch. 23 is between these two values. Well, now we need to go to disk one more time to read in this whole page for our leaf node. And now we can look up, okay, well, I can just loop through all the key value pairs here and find the key associated to um, that value. Sorry, find the value associated to that key. That's a better way of saying that. So why does this help us? Why does this process, it sounds like it's probably not clear that this is actually faster than the ABL tree. Like why is it better to have these wide trees where you have lots of branching and then at each node, you have to do a lot of work, right? Like when you go to a node, it's actually not easy to figure out which branch you wanna go down. For a particular key you have to actually kind of loop through and figure out oh where does this fit and then once you get to a leaf node you still have to loop over all that data there to find the key that's relevant so it's probably not clear that this actually makes us faster but notice here in order to do all this we only had to go to disk three times which is much much better than suppose if i made a binary search tree or avl tree for all these things and had to go to disk for every single node I went down that path. Because in the worst case, there'll be something like log n of those. And this is still, turns out, tends to still, uh, it will still be logarithmic, but it's a much better constant factor there because we have this branching. We're dividing by m each time, which is kind of clever. So here, these b plus trees are so disk friendly because we are minimizing the height of the tree. By allowing more branching, and by allowing, by removing all the information about the values until the leaf nodes, we're able to stick a lot of information into these internal nodes. And now this allows a higher branching factor, which allows us to have a shorter tree. And again, the B plus tree is optimized for reducing disk accesses. All of the relevant information about a single node fits on a single page. We design this by choice so that there's no wasted space whenever you go to disk. Um, if it's an internal node, all of the keys need to determine which branch you should go down. If it's a leaf, all of the relevant key value pairs are there. We're using as much of the page as we can so that we don't ever have any wasted space. Now, one of the things I was kind of highlighting there when we thought back to this picture was it probably wasn't super clear that this is faster because within each internal node and which within each leaf node you have to do looping to figure out what's the right key or what's the right thing you're looking for but it turns out in comparison to a disk access that's basically free right like remember going to disk once took like 10 million nanoseconds i forgot the exact number off the top of my head it took a long time sure you might have to do like m iterations of a loop but that's just in memory that and it probably will end up being cached that's gonna just end up being free or basically free. So, so much cheaper in comparison. And so that insignificant time might grow a little bit, but it's so much more cheaper than those disk accesses. So I wanna mention there, that that's our big takeaway in terms of you know how these things are organized with these keys that are kind of active these fence posts and kind of why the system is designed in this way. There are a lot of really interesting things that you can ask about B plus trees. Like, how do I add new keys? How do I remove keys? That's going to end up being beyond the scope of 373. We want you to learn enough about B plus trees so you know when to consider using one in your program. But one of our learning objectives is not that you're able to implement one um, and know how they work entirely behind the scenes. You'll learn more about that if you go on and take a class like 414, where you learn about databases and kind of how they work. So our takeaways here are kind of really focusing on that fact that that disk lookup is really, really slow. And so if you have a large amount of data, maybe enough that you can't sort of memory and you have to have disk, considering a B plus tree is probably the right thing to do. Not always, but it's probably a good hint. And these databases use these B plus trees all the time. And even things that aren't very obviously a database also end up using B plus trees. So if you have a Mac, or a Windows uh, machine, probably also a Linux one, all of the stuff happening behind the scenes in the operating system to manage your file system, that's also using B plus trees because going to disk, again, is really, really slow. 
So they use these kind of things to optimize making sure where your PowerPoints are and your how your file system is organized and all that stuff. And this B plus tree is designed to minimize these number of disk accesses as much as possible. Like everything we're doing is to minimize this number of times we have to go to disk and so that we can hopefully uh, speed up our programs by not having to wait forever for disks to happen. Um, so one thing I want to mention is a lot of the things we talked about in this lecture are really interesting and we did not get to fully dive into them. So in 373, we only need to know enough about the computer workings to understand how it might impact our performance. We want to make you conversational in the terminology of kind of real world implications of performance. There is so much more to learn, not just about B plus trees, but about how computers work. If you're really interesting, if you're really interested, there are a lot of really cool topics to explore in this space. I might recommend there's CSE 374, which talks a little bit more about this stuff, kind of this lower level programming and things like that. Uh, but we have some resources linked online that can help you out if you're curious about learning more about this stuff. That's all we have for today. Um, I'll hopefully see you in class where we can talk about some of this memory stuff and practice these B plus trees.